and share my screen and my sound. Read the 14 points, and what you find is that they mean something new to you every day because you have experiences that relate to these 14 points every day. Read the 14 points and what you find. Oh, comrades, welcome to the Southern Regional PO, uh, Political Education. And we're glad that you are here. And we're looking forward uh, to other forces coming into the Cardinal. It was some bad weather here. We had tornado warnings. So, uh, you know, some people uh, couldn't. Uh, be inside the store today, you know, uh, due to bad weather. But we are going to get this party started. Hopefully, these comrades uh, will be coming on soon. But we got a lot of a lot of good stuff to talk about today. And next week, we're going to get back into the fourteen point platform. But the last couple of weeks, and and we may do more one more week of, of dealing with definitions and stuff. But uh, and and again, I want to stress that this is definitely, you know, like we've been talking about social systems. Um, we've been talking about uh, colonialism, capitalism, uh, socialism, um, you know, and these, these different social systems that exist to try to give a better understanding of what we up against. And, and I have to give the disclaimer that these discussions have been surface discussions. It's so much that you can dive deeper into it to really get a, a clearer understanding of you know, what we're up against. But we want you to definitely be able to uh, look at, you know, have a have a discussion where we can can address some of these uh, these social systems because they done taught us or they haven't educated us to help understand what uh, the social system is, what colonialism is, what capitalism is. You know, they just told you to be for capitalism and against colonialism. And, and they left it very vague for you to be able to, you know, come to whatever conclusion that you want to come to. Just know that you should be against socialism and that you should be for uh, capitalism. But we want to uh, overturn that and help people understand and give clarity to, you know, these contradictions. So that's why we've been grappling with some of these terms because we talk about them in a 14 point platform, but I know some people are, are just getting, get, getting used to hearing these terms, uh, you know, firsthand for the first time. So, you know, we're gonna discuss today the different worldviews. You know what I'm saying? We're gonna discuss a little bit about African internationalism. We're gonna discuss a little bit about, you know, uh, Pan-Africanism, African fundamentalism. And what that means, and we're going to listen to uh, a clip, you know, maybe like a 15 minute clip of Chairman O'Malley, uh, Yesatella, giving, you know, talking about Garvey and the Garvey movement. And um, and I don't know, and, and some of y'all may have already heard this uh, video, but it was it was around the 100 year anniversary of the red, black and green flag. And we want to be able to clear some things up because, you know, a lot of times Garvey, you know, when I, before I met the movement, you know, Pan-Africanism kind of lumps everybody up in the same, in the same um, bag. And, and, and it doesn't really give you any clear definitions of what these things are. 
you know, and who these people are, or any, it don't deal with none of the contradictions. It don't deal with none of the differences. And even say like to this day, you know, people look at the red, black, and green flag as a, as a pan-African flag, but that's a, that's a, that's an error. You know what I'm saying? And so we're going to talk a little bit about that today. And so we want to be able to have this discussion where we, um, you know, raise some of this and, 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 and like I say, talk about some of it uh, today around around some of these questions that we just that we just mentioned. So, without further ado, I want to um, you know we're gonna look at. I'm gonna share my screen again, and then we're gonna look at uh, we're gonna look at a couple of definitions, have a brief discussion, and then we're gonna you know listen to the chairman. And 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 watch the chairman some some of it up. Did anybody have anything about anything I just mentioned before we go into uh, these definitions? All right, that's what's up. So one thing I want to say too, I want us to you know be clear on on uh, you know be on the same page with where we at in terms of in terms of some of the definitions. So we're going to look at some things that I know. I know this group are already clear on, so we ain't gonna have to grapple with this uh, too much. Can y'all see this screen? All right, so we're just gonna look at this real quick. African, when we say African, anybody, you know, whether you're looking at this, you know, now we, when we say African, we say that is the national identity of black people worldwide who make up the African nation. It's just it's just that simple, and and you know, and, but I know there's a lot of other worldviews and theories out there because you got people that say everything from, you know, we New Africans to, you know, we 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 and we, I don't even know how they say it. We indigenous to America. You know, I mean, there's a whole lot of ideas out there that disperse the African nation. So it's important for us to be clear that we say that we are African nation. We are African people. We want African people. There's no divisions in between us, no matter what artificial border that they done created. We are one African nation, you know? And so when we look at that, we have to be clear on that, that we want African people, no matter if you was born, uh, as Kormega and Kuma said, no matter if you was born in Ghana, in South Africa, or if you was born in Jamaica or in, in, in the U.S. But these are all our borders that they created to serve the, the colonial power. So we are one, one, we are one uh, African nation. And um, so we wanna look at, when we say African internationalism is the revolutionary scientific and materialist worldview and theory of the African working class. This fossil viable theory is recognized that European wealth and African impoverishment occurred as a result of the European attack on Africa, the division of African and African uh, 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 slaves and dispersal, uh, colonialism and neo-colonialism. So we talked a lot about colonialism last week, but if anybody needs some more clarity around colonialism and neo-colonialism, you know, we, let's, let's, let's grapple with that. And that's the worldview. African internationalism is really the 21st century version of African fundamentalism of what Garvey was talking about, really talking about the African working class, really talking about the African working class uh, taking his rightful stature, you know, um, and, you know, and we're going to look at uh, Pan-Africanism, the idea that peoples of African descent have common interests and should be unified. Historically, Pan-Africans has often taken uh, the shape of a political or court cultural movement. And I want to I want to say this real clear too, because you can you can find um probably <laughs> a whole lot of definitions or different different versions of the definition um that may not that may be clear and, and that may even go in a different direction. But it but it all of them it doesn't really sum up you know, where we are and, and where we're trying to go. 
So before we get into the video, I want to I want to open it up and see, you know, what people think about uh, those definitions, and if anybody have any input to help to bring out some of those differences, which we're going to talk a little bit more about at the at the end of the video as well. But I want to see if anybody had any any input. One about African nation that word is falsifiable. The word is supposed to be in there. The same thing. Yeah, I see that. I just seen it throw me off with the way it was. The way it was written. You, know, you say falsifiable. I, uh, yeah, I, maybe I, I think I'm it's supposed to be in there. Because like the word is saying is it's a false theory. Now, when it say falsifiable, what they mean when they say falsifiable is something that you can prove. You can, you can, you can like falsifiable meaning that um, that you can actually test it and prove if it's if it's if it's okay. If it's, that's what it means. Okay, I, I was just getting the, the word just you know kind of threw me off. <laughs> Man, that that, that's the English language. <laughs> well, yeah, well, I, I can understand that. <laughs> I would be going off. <laughs> the, the English language tear all us up, boy. No, yeah, I'm not very good at the King's English, whatever it is. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. But yeah, when they say falsify, but it's like in science, when you try, when you falsify something, it's like it, it's something that you can prove or disprove. What's something that's okay? Yeah, that's what this is. Just that word just threw me off. I, I, I've got the gist of what it was, but I, that when that word it just flipped me out. I, I got it since I know the meaning of it. Yeah, oh, right on. Mm -hmm. I think it was a good thing to to point out anyways. I was I was asking, I was just kind of asking background, but if you, um, like, examples of things that aren't fals falsifiable. Yeah. That is, <laughs> that is, well, we, we can come up with a whole lot of examples of, of stuff that's not falsifiable, but God is one of them. You know, and the whole concept of of, of 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 religion and stuff like that. That's something that you you can't prove or disprove. You know what I'm saying? What about, uh, what about spirituality? I mean, you know, that can get into the the same type of metaphysical type of thing that that um you know people come up with all type of things to justify you know doing doing something, but it's it's, it's metaphysics and it's stuff that you can't really you can't really prove, you know, you can't, you know, nobody can prove that you're going to be in heaven with your parents, you know, when you die, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Anybody, <laughs> anybody send a message back or nothing. Yeah. And, and nobody <laughs> send no email or nothing, you know what I'm saying? I ain't never met nobody that came back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. you just, you just, that's something that you just have to believe, you know? And, yeah, and it's, yeah. yeah, go ahead, go ahead. No, that's that. that mm. You on the correct line. I ain't got nothing to add. That's what I'm, that's what I'm about. Yeah, it, it's, it's idealism. And that's just something that you just have yeah, to believe. Yeah. You can't, you can't, yeah. there's no way for you to prove or disprove that, you know? Um, yeah. So we're going to look at a little bit of the video, then we're going to really get into the discussion, you know, because I want to talk about, a little bit about, you know, the difference between uh, Pan Africanism and African internationalism. And even African fundamentalism, you know, and why we say we are the 21st century versions of African uh, fundamentalism. That's what African internationalism is. And uh, Pan-Africanism was set up uh, to attack, you know, Garvey and the Garvey movement. And, and somehow, you know, it's now put forward as, <laughs> as the red, black, and green flag was the Pan-African flag. But we're going to talk more about that. But I'm going yeah. I'm to I'm I'm play the video. I'm going to share my screen, and then we're gonna get into the discussion uh, around this. All right, so. This is it. Let's see, I can. Uh... That is. All right, there we go. Can you share Uhuru, brothers and sisters, 
This is Dumali Shetela. I'm chairman of the African People's Socialist Party and leader of the Uhuru Movement and the International African Revolution. I would like for you to share, 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 share this message because we need to talk about something that's very important to us as African people who have been forcibly dispersed around the world. First of all, I want to say that this discussion has been prompted by the fact that today marks the 200th anniversary of the founding by the Universal Negro Improvement Associations and African Communities League, commonly called the UNIA of Marcus Garvey, uh, 100 years ago today, on August 13, uh, created the red, black, and green flag that has become the symbol for the liberation of our people. The fact is that 100 years ago, this occurred. But still today, the popularity of the red, black, and green flag is something that can be experienced throughout the world. If you should go uh, and look at uh, maps of various uh, entities that call themselves countries and uh, pseudo states uh, throughout the continent of Africa, you will see uh, some variation of the red, black, and green. The red, black, and green, of course, flag was something, as I mentioned, uh, that was pro proclaimed uh, at the Universal Negro Improvement Association's uh, uh, convention of the Negro peoples of the world that was held in New York on April uh, 13, uh, two, uh, 1920. And uh, so this was before uh, there was uh, any meaningful uh, even pretense of African freedom or in independent uh, so-called African state or country. The two exceptions at that time being, of course, uh, uh, Liberia uh, and Ethiopia. And that was nominally true. So uh, it is a statement that even 100 years later, African people in various places around the world still recognize red, black, and green and as I mentioned in various places, you can find the red, black, and green uh, incorporated into some of the flags that are supposed to be the national flags of different uh, countries on the continent of Africa in particular. We hear the red, black, and green, uh, though uh, it has uh, maintained an element of popularity uh, still in the United States often uh, 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 called uh, the African-American flag. We see uh, different uh, representatives of ruling uh, class media uh, characterizing it as the African-American flag. We have also hear it referred to as the Pan-African flag. And both of these uh, are wrong uh, characterizations of the red, black, and green. And we need to talk about and understand that. And we need to talk about and understand the significance of the red, black, and green beyond uh, simply being able to come out and hold a ceremony every now and then and, and have our children uh, 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 tell us that what the red and the black and the green stand for, uh, which uh, has become a sort of standard uh, practice in uh, some of our cultural communities. Uh, the red, black, and green, the flag of Garvey means a lot more uh, than that. It is not an African-American flag, never was an African-American flag. That's why the Garvey movement was characterized as a Universal Negro Improvement Association and African Communities League. When this flag was adopted in 1920, African people from throughout the world, including Australia, uh, came together in, uh, in New York uh, at Madison Square Garden. <laughs> it was from 25 to 50,000 African people who participated in this the most democratic uh, process that African people had ever uh, encountered any place on earth subsequent to our uh, being colonized as the people and dispersed around the world uh, up to that time. And even up to this day, we will never find, you cannot find a, a greater, more democratic expression of the will of African people than what happened in uh, Madison Square Garden on April 13th of this, of April 13th of, uh, of uh, uh, 1920. So it's not uh, an African-American flag. It was a flag that was voted on uh, by African people from throughout the world as our flag as a people. It is not a Pan-African flag. 
In fact, uh, the uh, leader of the uh, Pan-African movement, the uh, leader uh, coming from the NAACP Talented 10th uh, uh, group uh, was uh, W.E.B. Du Bois, who founded uh, the first, uh, who initiated the first uh, Pan-Africanist uh, organization, uh, uh, political organization uh, in 1919, a year uh, before this convention, but created it uh, as a means by which uh, the Garvey movement could be undermined and assaulted. So the Pan-Africanist movement, the Pan-African movement uh, that was led by Du Bois and the NAACP uh, was a movement that was designed to frustrate, to undermine uh, what the Garvey movement was all about. And so let's say uh, people uh, uh, bring out the red, black, and green. And the red, black, and green is something extraordinarily popular, important to the African People's Socialist Party and the Uhuru movement. You can tell that anytime you pass uh, our, our center uh, in St. Petersburg, Florida, where there is a 50-foot flagpole with a 15 by 25-foot red, black, and green flag flying there. You can tell it when you pass uh, our headquarters uh, in St. Louis, Missouri, uh, on West Florissant, where there's a 50-foot flagpole with a 15 by 25-foot uh, red, black, and green. They are so startling, so important to the African population there that people actually bring their children out and take pictures. School buses, when they are passing, driven by African people, filled with African children, stop and the African children get an opportunity to view the red, black, and green. It is an emotional, really important and powerful uh, symbol for African people. But it is more than just a symbol to be dragged out uh, on, on this day, on the anniversary of its founding. And this is something that we should all understand because Garvey was not simply about symbolism. His symbols were symbols of the African nation. Garvey was an anti-imperialist revolutionary force who struggle for the liberation of African people and he struggled for self-government just as the African People's Socialist Party and the Uhuru movement are about on today. Let's look at uh, a few things. Uh, first of all, as I mentioned, this uh, red, black, and green uh, designation as the national colors and national flag of African people was something that uh, was uh, initiated uh, on August 13th. At uh, the 30 day, this was a 30 day long convention that happened uh, in uh, uh, on uh, for the uh, uh, Universal Negro Improvement Association and African Communities League. That convention lasted for a full 30 days, and uh, on the 13th day, uh, I'm sorry, on the 29th day, uh, it is uh, the let's see what we're we looking at. I said 29th, but I think that's uh, uh, even uh, incorrect. It was uh, on the 39th day, uh, uh, on the 18th rather, the the, thir the 39th proclamation of the uh, of the uh, uh, Declaration of, uh, of for Freedom of the African Negro Peoples of the World. Uh, it was proclaimed and voted on that the colors red, black, and green be the colors of the Negro race. And, uh, and so that was voted on, but it was more than just about colors. These were symbol of nationhood and nationality. Let's see what else happened, some of the things that happened in that convention. For example, the 13th point of this uh, Declaration of the Rights of the Negro Peoples of the World read, we believe in the freedom of Africa for the Negro people of the world and by the principle of Europe for the Europeans and Asia for the Asiatics, we also demand Africa for the Africans at home and abroad. And 14, we believe in the inherent right of the Negro to possess himself of Africa and that his possession of same shall not be regarded as an infringement of any claim or purchase made by any race or nation. In other words, it doesn't matter what claim uh, that any other country, nation, corporation makes on any territory, any part of Africa, how much they say they paid for it, we disregarding that Africa is ours. He said that, uh, <clears throat> number 15, uh, we strongly condemn <clears throat> the cupidity of those nations of the world who, by open aggression or secret schemes, have seized the territories and inexhaustible natural wealth of Africa, and we place on record our most solemn 
determination to reclaim the treasures and possessions of the vast continent of our forefathers. And 16, we believe all men should live in peace one with the other. But when races and nations provoke the ire of other races and nations by attempting to infringe upon their rights, war becomes inevitable. And the attempt in any way to free oneself or protect one's rights of heritage becomes justifiable. And then uh, uh, on, on point uh, 27, and all of these points are something that you should be looking at. You can find these. This is, these are the Declaration of Rights of the Negro Peoples of the World uh, that were proclaimed at the convention 100 years ago uh, in, in New York uh, by the Universal Negro Improvement Association uh, at a conference, a convention that was attended by from 25 to 50,000 African people from all over the world. And the reason there's such a vast uh, difference in the estimation of the number of people who were there is because there were so many people that they could not fit uh, into Madison Square Garden. So speakers were set up and thousands and thousands of people outside of Madison Square Garden also participated uh, from uh, in this, uh, in this uh, convention. So, and I think it's important for you to understand point 27 says, we believe in the self-determination of all peoples. This is UNIA uh, and uh, point 50. We demand a free and unfettered commercial intercourse with all the Negro peoples of the world. Uh, and uh, a point uh, 53, where we proclaim the 31st day of August of each year to be the international holiday to be observed by all Negroes. These are some of uh, the provisions to be found in the Declaration of Rights of the Negro Peoples of the World. But these were not just empty proclamations. Garvey built a massive organization with the intent to take Africa back, uh, to proclaim our nationhood and to create a government that was des designed to free us. You should take a look at a book called Race First. It was written by Tony Martin. And it's probably the most authoritative book that was written uh, about Marcus Garvey. On page 41 of this book, you see this quote by Garvey. It says, when we, as members of the Universal Negro Improvement Association, talk about a government of our own in Africa, a flag of our own, and a national anthem of our own, some Negroes laugh at us, but we have only pity for them as they know not what they do. When Uncle Sam lynches her black boys with her uniform on their back, and John Bull cast her ex-soldiers, <coughs> uh, ex-soldier aliens who helped her in the Ashanti and Zulu wars to take big slices of Africa, then it's high time for some dull, apathetic Negroes to think in terms of nationhood. <coughs> and there's another quote says, we are determined to solve our own problems by redeeming our motherland Africa from the hands of alien explorers and found there a government, a nation of our own, strong enough to lend protection to the members of our race scattered all over the world and to compel the respect of the nations and races of the earth. And Martin uh, also, uh, uh, Mitch says this about the, the Garvey and the Universal Negro Improvement Association. It said Garvey uh, could <coughs> proclaim his disagreement with the limited strategies of his rivals. The UNIA, he declared, did not speak in the language of theology and religion, not in the language of social reform, but the Universal Negro Improvement Association speaks in the language of building a government of building political power and all that goes with it. So the question before us really, brothers and sisters, is the real meaning and significance of the red, black, and green. It is not a Pan-African flag. The Pan-Africanist movement was created, formed in part by the NAACP under the leadership of W.E.B. Du Bois, who was this most uh, significant uh, 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 African leader, or as they would say, uh, uh, the colored leader uh, at that time. 
and uh, was to remain uh, a highly significant uh, a force for a long time after that. Uh, but they, they, he created uh, the uh, actual uh, Pan-Africanist Congress as, an, as a Pan-Africanist Congress, uh, as an attack, as an assault uh, on the universal Negro improvement and, and, and uh, uh, African Communities League. And he uh, actually worked hand in glove with the United States government and assortment of others to try and crush the Garvey movement contributing to the success of the United States government in arresting uh, Garvey, imprisoning Garvey, and then kick him out, kicking him out of the United States uh, and contributing to the destruction uh, of, the, of the Garvey movement, which was a condition in part for the rising significance of the NAACP uh, and also the Communist Party USA. All of these forces uh, worked together in order to undermine uh, Garvey. So this is not a Pan-Africanist uh, flag. And the only reason that the NAAC, that the Pan-Africanists talk now about this being a Pan-Africanist flag, because there is nothing that they can hold up to proclaim of their own in terms of success. The Garvey movement is alive today in the form of the African People's Socialist Party and in the form of the African Socialist International. Uh, Garvey was what he characterized as an African fundamentalist. And the African People's Socialist Party and the Uhuru Movement uh, is an organization of African internationalists, which are 21st century African fundamentalists, 21st century Garveyites. So for us, the flag of Marcus Garvey, the flag of the red, black, and green, the flag that was voted on in the most significant democratic process that Africans have ever experienced since we have come under captivity and forcibly dispersed around the world. That flag uh, is the flag for independent self-government and that's the work that the African People's Socialist Party and the Uhuru movement are engaged in every day of our lives. We intend to be self-government, self-governing. We intend to see the flag of the red, black, and green planet as Marcus Garvey would say on the hilltops of Africa and, and placed every place uh, African people are engaged uh, in struggle uh, today. Our objective is to create a united Africa. It is to create a, a liberated Africa and a united African people around the globe with our loyalty to our Africa and to the red, black, and green. So hold up high the red, black, and green, but recognize that this is more than an empty symbol. It is a call to everyone who believes, uh, pretends to believe in what Garvey believed in uh, to action. It is a call to uh, proclaim uh, the fact that we shall be a self-governing people once again. It is a call to African people around the world to take Africa for Africans at home and abroad. That's what the red, black, is green is all about. That's what we are struggling for. That's what the African People's Socialist Party is all about. That's what the African Socialist International and the Uhuru movement spend every day working to create. That's what the 52 economic institutions that our party and our movement have created uh, uh, moving toward our own economic rights, our own free economy, our own independent anti-colonial economy. That is the red, black, and green of Marcus Garvey. And we call on everyone to join us in growing the red, black, and green, growing the significance of the red, black, and green by carrying out the mission that was established for us by Marcus Garvey and the Universal Negro Improvement Association and African Communities League in New York at Madison Square Garden 100 years ago today. You can find us at APSPUhuru.org. Join in this incredible struggle and plant the red, black, and green everywhere you are as an actual symbol of action to take our Africa, to take our freedom back and possess it ourselves. Uhuru. Uhuru. <laughs> but that got me crunk. That's what I'm talking about. Let's 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 open this up. I mean, that that was that was that was a lot. And uh there's no African internationalist that can spit African internationalism better than the chairman, you know, and it always brings clarity to it. And 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 one of the things that that I really appreciate about the chairman, chairman said you ain't gotta you ain't gotta make shit up, just tell the truth. You know what I'm saying? But uh, let's open it up and see what people think about. There's a couple of questions I have, but I want to, you know, open it up and see what people think. Overall. One thing, uh, 
you know, I know Chevin talk about the flag, and then, you know, a lot of people call it the Pan African flag. But for the longest time, I don't know where I got it from a long time ago. I always called it the African Liberation flag. You know, I don't, you know, and I know if you look at try to buy one somewhere, they have Pan African or some kind of Afro flag or something, you know, Afro American flag. But I always, like I said, as, as I had it, it's been on my head. You know, I ain't even the idea of the colors, because uh, you used to say the colors were like the green was for fertility of the soil, you know, in Africa. Blood, we were ready for the blood we shared to get back to Africa, and black was for the people. Yeah, you know, playing different, but that's that always been in my head. I don't know where I got it from for a long time, but always with the name of the flag, I always thought the African Liberation flag. Right on. Hey, I, I think I think if Comrade Life was on, he would say, "It's just you a smart African." <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because that is the Liberation flag, you know, and yeah. and and. You know, but the thing is, when you when you don't have your own theory, you don't have your own yeah. means to investigate. Like what happens is that you just begin to accept whatever somebody else had, and and you know, and some of the stuff kind of you know, once you start to learn and you really become an African internationalist, you know, you get uh, you can get upset about some of the stuff because it's like how they just done, you know, not only defamed Garvey but made him into something that he wasn't, and even like. Um, Oh, yeah, I think yeah. it was the US organization that uh, even rearranged the colors that are red, right. black, and green. You know what I'm saying? And <laughs> came up with some variation of different uh, meanings. So even when you got Kwanzaa, you have, uh, it's not, I don't think it's, it's not red, black, and green. It's like black, green, and it, it, it's, they, they rearranged the colors and gave it a different meaning. I'm gonna I'm I'm find, I'm gonna find, I might not be able to do it before this, but I'm gonna come I back to this. I've seen about the different yeah. colors, uh, yeah. groups, certain colors, and certain any, days. So. Right on. Anybody else? Aisha, did you have any thoughts? Dr. Aisha Fields? Oh, uh -huh. uh -huh. Yeah, I, I want to appreciate uh, the, the PE. I came in. I didn't see the maybe the very beginning of what Chairman said, so I'm not sure if there was more, some things that I missed. But um, I think that the 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 the, the connections that the Chairman has helped us to make in this PE, um, or we're like taking the idea of symbols out of the sky, you know, mm -hmm. and I, and I think a lot of our movement, our general like movement you know um there's been an overemphasis i'm not talking about the huru movement i'm talking about what we might call the black movement you know there's been an over emphasis on symbols and i think what the uhuru movement what the chairman has helped us to understand is that we're not fighting just for ideas we're not fighting just for symbols or recognition you know of our humanity or those kind of things that you know, that is like chasing your tail or chasing the wind, but that we're fighting for a, a concrete reality, which is to end this relationship of domination that's been imposed on us. And that when we talk about freedom, we're talking about what Marcus Garvey was talking about, which is not just an idea or a concept, but it really means self-government, that it really means taking back the land that belongs to us and establishing on that land in our homeland Africa, a government that will meet the needs of our people that that's what we mean when we talk about freedom. So the flag is not just something that should make us feel proud or, you know, something that just theoretically connects us as African people, but that this flag is a symbol of what has to be done, which is to to once again become a self-governing people. So I appreciate, you know, the chairman for helping us to understand, yeah, what Garvey and the UNIA um, were really fighting for and to recognize the opportunity and the responsibility we have when we join the Uhuru movement to advance that. And then one thing for me that I'm clear on is that with this, with the consolidation of this flag, 
and the the organization of the UNIA that we've already resolved over a hundred years ago that we are one African people, one nation. So we can't let anybody take us back. Like African people were clear on that question more than a hundred years ago and what needed to be done. So, so it's just for us to complete what it is that the African, more than 11 million African people are already united with a hundred years ago. And the only way we're gonna be able to do that is under the leadership of the African People's Socialist Party, Dohura Movement, Uhuru. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate that, comrade. And and um, and I, I unite. And and uh, Dexter, I don't know. He might not be able to talk, but I know he had asked a question. You know, in the chat, saying, um, you know, what, you know, what do we say to people to say, you know, what's the difference between Pan Africanism and African internationalism. Anybody want to take that? I do. Oh. Um, Uhuru. Uh, okay. So it's a good thing we got two um, uh, NCC members of the party on here. And a founding. So, <laughs> and oh, uh, yes, and a founding member. Um, other party on here too. So, um, so this is uh, so y'all hurt me up for it. But um, okay, so the difference. What I would say the difference between, and what I've learned the difference between Pan Africanism and to be an African internationalist is that um, one, the, our uh, we have a. The theory of African internationalism is a <clears throat> is a theory of, of practice and it's a revolutionary theory. Pan-Africanism is not a revolutionary. It just recognizes that we one that we black people around the world. And Pan-Africanism also doesn't address the question, uh, the class question, which I think I saw something in the comments about that, but um in the chat, but uh, uh about the it doesn't recognize, it doesn't address the class question and and really, honestly, to recognize that we want African people around the world, but um, to not come to revolutionary conclusions is meaningless. And so in Pan-Africanism doesn't lead you to revolution, doesn't lead you to change the conditions for the poor working class African people, which is the masses of our nation around the world. It's just understanding that, that you are African person, but it doesn't say how to change the conditions for the poor working class for, for African people. And African internationalism is a theory that yes, it, while we do recognize that we want African people, it takes it further than just recognizing we want African people. It addresses the class question and it addresses um, uh, revolution. And, 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 it's a, and it's a socialist theory also in um, understanding that uh, the process of revolution will lead us to socialism that will change the conditions for African people. So um, that's what I would say is the the difference of Pan-Africanism and African internationalism. <laughs> it's like one is for the middle class. It's like one is for a middle class and then the other one is for the, the, the poor working class masses. <clears throat> yeah, and the and what you about to say, I appreciate it, come back, uh, Kundai. Oh no, oh, I, no I, was, I, I was agreeing with her, uh, cause uh, you know, like you can look at Pan-Africanism, it's like, say, you know, oh yeah, we from that. Oh, you know, all black people around the world from Africa, you know, that now just recognize that and go home. But African internationalism tell you, you know, we need to get what the scientific theory that tells what what we need to do to get back to Africa and you know, and uh, unite black people wherever you are. But one just saying, you know, who hip hip hooray, you know, we are Africans. But African internationalism tell you what you need to do and why you need to do it and give you a scientific reason for doing it. Oh, right on, right on. And I think the chairman even laid out in, in, in that too, you know, just to pick it back off everybody else, you know, that, uh, you know, one is re reform, you know, it's, it's about reforming uh, uh, and, and participating in the system. And one, and, and Garvey was about uh, power, about self-government, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and Pan-Africanism doesn't talk about self-government and, and, and the working class. Uh, in that in that way so you know so you know I think uh and 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 over time I think like I Dr. Aisha said uh we get caught up into the symbolism and even I done met people 
you know, that would say, you know, they wanted to be a Panther since they was little. So they, so they, so they joined the, the, the Panthers now, even though they don't necessarily stand for what they stood for. Like the new Panthers don't stand for what the old Panthers stood for, but they just wanted, they just always wanted to be a Panther. You know what I mean? And, but not really grappling with contradictions that exist and, and, and development and stuff like that. You know, and and African internationalism, as well as Garvey, you know, sought, sought to solve the problem, practically solve problems, and 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 really uh, take power and and self govern. You know, and 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 we have to be able to 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 do to do just that. Anybody else want to want to touch on this? Because I, I, yeah, I mean, anybody else want to touch touch on this? We have a couple of a couple of comments and questions. They snapping out on Facebook, and so we got a couple of uh, comments and questions on on Facebook that we going that uh, Comrade Kundai is going to read, and we're going to try to address uh, some. We may go uh, a little a little past, just a little bit past eight, because we started maybe like five or six minutes late, so we may go like six minutes over just to make up for that. But um, yeah, there's a couple of questions, and then I have one question that I want us to grapple with. And, and I think it's important for us to really look at this. And I'm also going to put into the chat, the chairman was, was talking about the, uh, the, uh, the declaration to the Negro world. Uh, I'm going to put the link in the chat. So if anybody want to look at that, you know, you can. And that was from uh, Garvey and the conference that they had. So I will put that in the chat and then, uh, but Comrade Kundai is going to is going to read uh, some of the comments and, and we'll respond respond to some of them. Oh, oh. Oh, um, uh, okay, so. Um, Forgive me if I'm uh, mispronouncing your name, uh, Comrade uh, Azuya says that uh, many Pan Africanists in our community in our communities reject socialism. Um, and then, um, uh, then we have um, Comrade Kamu says that. Uh, um, he rejects socialism. Uh, he asked what's wrong with rejecting socialism. But I think we kind of just answered that. Um, and then uh, the last comment from Comrade uh, Kaz uh, Kazayu, Kaz Kazuya, Comrade Kazuya is um, <clears throat> uh there, I think we'll say there were a lot of black communists, socialists in our history. This generation, mass majority black people call themselves Pan Africanist nationalists with red, black, and green flag. Kwame Ture calls Pan Africanist is version of socialism. This will lease more division. I'm not 100% sure what that means. Um, Comrade uh, Kazuya, maybe you could um, deepen, like say a little bit more. But I think in terms of like division though, I think we hit like, um, if if I'm understanding it correctly, like I said, you can deepen it in the in the comments on Facebook, but um, uh, that's something I think we hear a lot as organizers about like, like, like separating ourselves and division in the community and things like that. And it's not like we have theory and we have um, and we have like the, our 14 point platform that we study in, in this and we have other principles and, you know, and morals and values and stuff in the party. Um, uh, because 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 in some ways you do have to separate yourself from the masses from 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 those that's uh, that's not for the people or you have to be able to separate those those people like how the chairman was talking about Du Bois, be able to separate those people from the masses or from, you know, true African leaders or revolutionaries because people will um, 
will sabotage the African revolution and liberation for people. And if we don't recognize that, it's like it's 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 like we we're not moving off of science, we're not moving off of theory or anything. And so it's not, I think um certain things like like that we do in the party, it's not a way of like separating us, like detaching us from the people, but it's detaching us from people that don't that that don't move in the interests of the poor working class African people around the world. And so in some ways we are gonna have to separate ourselves from people that don't um in a strategic way that don't work in the interests of the people because we're not the same. We're not Pan-Africanists. We're not um, uh, NAACP. We're not them. And, and, and if they can't stand on the right side of the question, then we do have to be se separated. I, th I mean, uh -huh. oh, Yeah, and I, 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 think, I think a couple of th different things, but I think like, it's not a matter of just trying, trying to separate, it's trying to come to the right conclusions, you know, and and like Pan-Africanism, this is not something that we just made up. You know, they attacked the Garvey movement. They worked with the FBI, the CIA to attack the Garvey movement. You know, uh, this is not something that was made up. And even Kwame Nkrumah did not even uh, understand the class struggle until after he was overthrown. I think he was in Guinea when he wrote about neo-colonialism as the last stages of uh, imperialism. You know what I'm saying? He didn't really understand that that question uh, before he was overthrown, you know. And and uh, but we have to really look at, you know, this is this is in part why I thought it's important for us to deal and grapple with these definitions and really even beyond this, look at more, look look into these definitions more because you know that's what traps us a lot of times is that we speak in English, you know what I'm saying, and what they mean you know, by, by socialism or what they mean by communism, like it doesn't, it doesn't fit, you know, the definition of what that means for the African working class, because you let the communist party say, uh, 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 speak to it or somebody that just Marxists or communists, you know, they talk about a worker as this, if, if there's a worker in general, they don't talk about, you know, the, the colonized African, uh, they talk about all workers as if, you know, they are underneath the pedestal as well, but they don't talk about beneath the pedestal that the, the white worker, the, the white worker uh, sits on top of a pedestal and, 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 and may produce uh, a car, but they don't talk about the Africans and the colonized people that that's beneath the pedestal that actually had to mine the aluminum, mine the rubber, mine the coal tan, mine, they don't even talk about them. You know what I'm saying? And so we have to be able to raise that as one African people that the real contradiction is the pedestal itself. You know what I'm saying? And, and that the real contradiction is that the African working class has to unite and have to, have, has to lead us out of this process. And uh, Du Bois and, and Garvey always, I mean, Du Bois and, and, and the pan Africanist movement, they, they had that talented 10th philosophy and 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 uh, reformist philosophy that attack uh, the Garvey movement. And if we're not clear on those type of things, you know, you'll vote for Obama. You know what I'm saying? You'll vote uh, and and be led into the slaughter, you know, by somebody like Kamala Harris. You know, and 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 uh, not to be clear that we coming to take power. We coming to govern, to be a self government, to be a self determined people, and not uh, just have reform that gives us, uh, it don't even really give us a bigger piece of the pie because if, 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 if colonialism is maintained in any type of way, it's at our expense, you know what I'm saying? So Africans here may be able to uh, uh, partake in a, in, a, in, a, in a smidgen of uh, uh, some type of progress while it, it, it forces Africans and our brothers and sisters in other places to, to, to uh, have to deal with all type of uh, atrocities, you know what I'm saying? And we have to be able to sum this thing up and move forward in the best way. So the real contradiction is that they have divided <laughs> that, they have created and, 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 and drew the line and made some divisions. All we did was observe it and, and call it out. You know what I'm saying? So we observed it and call it out and then say, we have to have a way forward with our own uh, theory and worldview that works in our own interest. And Pan-Africanism still works in the interest of 
of the colonizer. Okay. I know I said a lot, but uh, anybody else want to touch on that? I mean, it's open. The floor is open for anybody to touch on that before we move to the next section. And I know we got. I know we should talk about this more, but we are not Marxists. We are not communists. We are not uh, not communists in the sense of like the communist USA. You know what I'm saying? We are not uh, that. We are not those versions of what what they call socialism. And, and again, that's that's part of the problem is that. We speak in English and they don't define these things in a way that works in, in white people and, and the colonizers' interests. But African internationalism is on the scene. Chairman O'Malley is tell us on the scene. And, and we define these things in a way that works in the best interest of African, of the African working class, the same way that Garvey did, the same way that African fundamentalism did. But does anybody else want to add anything, comments, questions, or anything? like that before we uh, move to the next section of the of the of the discussion. That was helpful. I appreciate it. What do y'all think about this discussion? I it's, it's something that I have been struggling with because I, I think um, you know you always hear these discussions and 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 people take on these things and and, and then you hear you know like people Pan African is raising the red, black, and green flag, and and but not even understanding because I don't even think I think a lot of Pan Africans may not be clear on the question. You know what I'm saying? And 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 not understanding that uh, that that was a movement that was created to undermine Garvey's movement to under, undermine that. So, any thoughts on what people think about this discussion before we before we get ready to close out? Go ahead. You know, having these discussions is one way we can straighten them out. People confused about uh, definitions and stuff and what they think they are and what they need to be. Having these discussions to help, you know, help everyone to, you know, to better understand it. Some people just pick up a name and don't even know what it means. So we, one thing we do is explain and you, you get a chance to get everybody get a chance to put the input in. And somebody else might have pointing on helping you straight, straight down what you're thinking about. Yeah, and I think uh, right on. And I think Kazua made a statement saying that um, we have a lot of neocolonials in our in our race too. How are we going uh, to unite in mass front to fight? Uh, the beast. Yes, many of these socialist groups uh, failed in U.S. facts, colonialism, settler colonialism, which none none of these groups never never mentioned. I mean, we have to struggle, and we can't be afraid of struggle. You know what I'm saying? And 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 we we have to be able to, as African internationalism, put African internationalism out there. We just had a magnificent uh, uh, con uh, uh, plenary, the third plenary of the of the seventh Congress of the African People's Socialist Party. We just had that 50 years of relentless struggle of genuine African socialist revolutionary on the ground. Chairman O'Malley, the African People's Socialist Party, your who movement, uh, the chairman has successfully been able to solve a lot of these fundamental, well, all of the fundamental uh, uh, contradictions of, 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 the, uh, of the revolution. You know what I'm saying? So we have to be able to build organization. We have to join the APSP. We have to join the African People's Social Party. We have to be a part of organization that's not shying away from the contradiction, but addressing the contradiction, overturning the contradiction, and waging a way forward to be self-governing. And some people are not going to make it. You know what I'm saying? Some people are going to unite with the colonizer. And they might not say they unite with the colonizer, but they're going to unite with the colonizer, you know, uh, and, and we have to be able to uh, call that out. That's something that Malcolm brought to the struggle is that to be able to sum up and criticize, and we have to practice in criticism and self-criticism and things that's gonna help us to move forward. So, you know, with that being said, comrades, we, we might have to have more of this discussion because I think it's, it's a real hot topic and, and, and I think it's something that we have to grapple with and, 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 and struggle with around uh, helping bring clarity to, but I think uh, everybody has contributed in such a great way 
in saying that we have to have, you know, uh, the work has to be primary. That's what Garvey did. That's what the party did. That's what the chairman uh, uh, has always uh, done. That work has to be primary. We have to, we have to uh, self-govern. So if you're not a member of the African People's Social Party, you want to be on the right side of the question. You want to join and learn more about African internationalism. You want to learn more about the 50 relentless uh, years of struggle to redeem Africa um, and has been the only revolutionary organization that has had 50 uh, continuous years without any break uh, on the ground. Uh, right here is the African People's Socialist Party. So like the chairman said, join the African People's Socialist Party, APSP, Uhuru, uh, dot org. Join the African People's Socialist Party. And as we know, every, every week, um, we want to uh, raise $100 in these sessions to be able to build, uh, uh, you know, resources for the Southern region to be able to carry out our work, to be able to win people to uh, uh, participate uh, and, and uh, go to the BIB, uh, the Black is Black Co uh, Coalition, March on the White House, Black People's March on the White House, that we do every year. We want to be able to organize, and 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 as we say, freedom ain't free. So you know, we, it, it it doesn't matter how much you give. You know, you can you can give everything from a dime to uh to the whole hundred. You know what I'm saying? Or, or you can even give more than that if, if you want to. If 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 the mood hits you, you know what I'm saying. So, but you can donate at um at pound, and you can donate from Cash App with uh, uh, the dollar sign, not pound, the dollar sign, APSP South. And you can also uh, donate on PayPal at paypal.me black, black backslash APSP Southern. So if you wanna donate, you know, let us know that you wanna, let, let us know that you wanna donate. Let us know that you wanna participate uh, in some way. And like I said, there's no amount that's too small. And uh, Comrade in Hindu has already, be kind of come right at you do be setting the standard, boy. Come right at you do. I always gotta say is one of the founding members of the African People's Socialist Party. You know what I'm saying? So he's been a part of this this relentless struggle uh, to redeem Africa from the beginning. You know, and uh, I, I really appreciate his comrade and the insight that he brings to the table and the fact that he's practically doing the work necessary uh, to to make this happen. And and get your burning spear newspaper. Go to the burning spear. Uh, dot com. Get your Bernie Spear newspaper because this is the way that we get African internationalism out in the world. And the question was asked about, you know, uh, these neo-colonialists that's out there. The, the the hood can sum these neo-colonialists up. They get they know when they see white power and blackface, and we want to give them the Bernie Spear to be able to have the confidence to know that they write about how they sum, you know, uh, the, the these uh, white power and blackface up. So go ahead and make your donation. Uh, come right in, do donate twenty dollars. I'm gonna donate twenty five dollars. So that put us at forty five dollars. You know, right now. And uh, anybody else that want to contribute, you know, uh, let me know so we can we can make this make this hundred dollars before we get off this call. Anybody? Yeah, else? What I, I often say what I did. I forgot last week, so I did last week and this week. That's what I was. Because I forgot, I kept saying I was gonna do it, and I said I still haven't done it. So I thought I was gonna do it before we start. So I did for this again last week. All right, that was that was up right on, comrade. Yeah. <laughs> and see that that's an African internationalism, boy. Honest, honest African internationalism. He didn't have to say nothing about last week, but you know that's just that's just that's just being you know uh, a real African internationalist. You know what I'm saying? So I, I appreciate that, comrade. So we have we have we have four to five comrades. Anybody else? I heard somebody. It's like when, when, when you start talking to moving now, you can't. <laughs> it's the wrong time to move. Start moving your lips. So we, we're gonna get to you. But I want to say that uh, somebody in the chat, Riverside, comrade Riverside, Riverside, you was quiet tonight, comrade. You ain't had nothing for me. Comrade Riverside says she donated five. Right on. Appreciate that, comrade. Right on. 
Yeah, we're gonna have to figure that out. She said she couldn't unmute. She, I don't know why that's that way. We'll we'll figure that out, comrade. We gotta get you, we gotta get you and Queen Mother out there. Queen Mother, this this is our second week, and, and, and I ain't really heard from her in, in two weeks. We might have to go find her in a minute. Make sure everything all right. <laughs> yeah. But I want to say that we can we can donate comrades uh even beyond this. Uh and I know there's other people that's gonna be donating that may not be on the call right now, but uh typically there's a few people uh from Comrade Life, uh uh Comrade Saeed that normally send in their resources even beyond this. So even after the even after the meeting, whether you're on Facebook or or on the Zoom, you know, or you see it on YouTube that uh, you still can make the donations. And again, the cash app is dollar sign APSP South. And um, and then the PayPal is paypal.me uh, backslash APSP uh, Southern. And if you got any questions, let me know. And uh, we'll be putting the link to the, um, to the declaration to the Negro world by Marcus Garvey on the Facebook as well. So comrades, I appreciate y'all being, being on tonight. I appreciate the discussion and, and we're going we're gonna to make this thing happen and, and look forward to uh, making the work primary. Let's build this revolution. Let's take power and let's redeem Africa and continue the 50 year um, of relentless struggle to redeem Africa. And uh, I salute our leadership, Chairman Omalia Satella. Ooh, comrades, Vanguard up. Oh, uh -huh.